the first video in this series on the isolated queen pawn. What is an isolated queen pawn? It's one pawn that cannot be protected by other pawns. And it, the D pawn is very often isolated because it happens in a lot of openings. In general, it's not good to have an isolated pawn. That's yeah, fine. It's just simply not good to have an isolated pawn. But with the D pawn, there come some benefits, uh, some attacking chances and very free uh, peace play. And uh, and already uh, in uh, way back with Sigbert Taras, uh, who played the Taras uh, defense of the Queen's Gambit, it was a discussion between the free peace play you get from the isolated Queen pawn and the problem with the pawn that it's weak and uh, can be blocked and sometimes won. So it's uh, and it's an important structure because it arises in a range of openings from the uh, panel variation in the Karakan to the very topical Ragosin Queen's Gambit decline that is all the range right now in uh, the world uh, top and also uh, like the Nimso India and the semi-classical uh, semi and uh, and so on and Queen's Gambit decline, Miran uh, and a lot of openings. So it is Queen's Gambit accepted is a very typical example. So it is something you can get with both colors a lot and it's very important to understand it. And this is the, the beginning. I have a lot of examples after this, and I hope you will see them all. It's kind of uh, easy to understand the things, but it's, it's really good to know what to do because you will uh, play much better. And uh, actually, I have been a little bit after uh, the players from the national Danish team because I don't think they understand this good enough. They, there are some subtleties they simply don't get because they have not studied the old-fashioned way like this one. So uh, I hope they will, uh, they will watch this and let's get into it. The game we're going to see as the introduction game is Lubomir Kavalek against uh, Bent Larsen. And of course, Ben Larsen is a big hero of Danish chess. It's from a match in Soling in 1970. And uh, it starts with e4 and uh, Ben Larsen plays the Karakan. And here comes the dreaded Panoff uh, variation that is still played today. I think uh, Knight is, is, is the main exponent for the white side. Here, uh, the main line these days is uh, Knight c6. Uh, to simply uh, avoid the, the structure we will have in the game. I think knight c6 is the best move for black. Another option is g6, sort of playing the terrors reversed, uh, just at full tempo down. Anyway, um, e6 cannot be a bad move. It does, of course, lock this one in. White also have interesting option with c5 sometimes, but the main move is knight f3. And here, if you go bishop b4, which I'm sure is the best move, we will have a Nimso Indian, or we will stay in Pan of Can uh, territory after c takes d5. Anyway, uh, bishop b4 is the most active move, and I believe it to be the best move. I don't like Larsen's choice of bishop e7, even though it's a very respected variation, it is simply too passive, and blacks score is not very good. Um, so I would not recommend this, even though it looks very solid and, and uh, nice to just uh, play this way. Uh, and white takes on d5, uh, not wanting to waste a tempo uh, with, when black takes on c4. And black takes back with the knight, bishop d3. You could also put the knight, uh, the bishop on c4. Um, as a general rule uh, of these positions, general rule, white would in most like to have the bishop on this diagonal when, uh, especially if black has played h6, um, but as soon as black plays g6, you would like to have it on this diagonal because then f7 becomes much weaker and the square d5 becomes much more important. Uh, so, but that's something you will definitely learn if you go through the whole course. Anyway, castle, castle, I see six, rookie one. Another rule of thumb. In general, 
white would like to have his rooks on these two squares. Uh, the C file is usually not very interesting for white, even though it's an open file. It often will lead to piece uh, to a lot of pieces getting exchanged. And very important rule: this is to the benefit of the player who's playing against the isolated uh, D pawn. When you are playing against the isolated D pawn, you would like to exchange pieces as a general rule so uh, so and and of course when you are having the deep on you would like not to exchange pieces and here uh, last one goes knight f6 i think nowadays if black plays this line he plays bishop e f6 here this is the main line and then i think bishop e4 is also the main line uh, you will see something similar in a game uh, with smuslov later in this series but knight f6 is nowadays considered a little bit passive. The main move here, I believe, to be a3 uh, and b6, bishop c2 and queen d3, setting up some tricky stuff. But bishop d5 is, is uh, not a bad move. And according to uh, Alan Stieg Rasmussen, it is the main move. And a3 and bishop c2. And why this bishop c2? Black was not threatening to take here, so why play this move? The idea is to go here, setting up a nice little battery uh, down to at, at this square. And we can immediately see that, for instance, something like this is not something you really like when you're having a battery this way. So uh, this is an interesting option. Rook e8, um, covering the bishop here. And maybe putting rooms on, uh, and and these squares can be weak, so the rook is often pretty good here. But it is considered to be uh, to wide advantage this kind of position. And uh, we set up the threat to take here and uh, take on h7. And of course, h6 does not help at all. So um, g6 is necessary, and white goes h4 and that is a cool move and the best move in the position um, i think black has to find some kind of idea here what he, he does is is not good enough uh, and it's it's, um, it's it's not helping it's, the thing is this of course gives uh, white king uh, some air uh, but it's also boosting this one and it's getting ready for sometimes pushing this way and it uh, gives the knight access to g5 after the bishop is exchanged. Uh, black has to find something to do here that um, that is good. And what he also has to be careful about is this um, this move. Anyway, he goes here, white goes here, and as I said, you would like the rooks on these uh, here. And uh, white's next is probably some kind of plan here, and and maybe d5, um, and opening up to this uh, weak square down here. Often when white goes d4, d5, uh, black the the and the and the center disappears. It's to his advantage because he is better developed. He's usually better developed. A6. I don't like that move. That is simply too passive. He has to go maybe knight a5 uh, to avoid the next move, which is also very important. Bishop b3, strong move. Um, after this is played, the bishop belongs on this diagonal. And um, yeah, knight a5, natural move, opening up for the bishop, taking control back over this square and attacking here. But it doesn't help that much. Because after these moves, uh, White is still uh, in. He does have a clear advantage in this uh, at this stage of the game. Um, it's it's clear that that White, yes, this one is weak, but he has only active pieces, good attacking chances, and uh, maybe sometimes he will simply blast Black off the board. Sometimes it was even with something like this and d5, and uh, you just get blown away. So black plays b5, uh, hoping to put the knight here and uh, starts to annoy white a little bit. Knight e5 takes more control over the square, and this is often 
Boom. A good move when black has moved this one here. If it goes there before, you can usually just take it. And uh, and this transformation is in general not so dangerous for black unless he, he loses instantly. Um, here, uh, often after 95, if it's premature, you could go here. But here, this is simply uh, too dangerous. And, uh, and white will... Uh, I don't think uh, followed by something like this is and 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 this move is simply horrible for uh, for white. So for black. So um, so you cannot play knight back. So the knight is sort of trapped here. Um, you might even threaten b4, but maybe, or might maybe you're threatening this move. So do something knight here, and um, this is also a standard thing. The problem is white is simply too well developed here, so his initiative will just continue. You we will exchange everything, and then we'll have this one against this one, and white will have a nice kingside attack. So take. That looks unnatural, but it's something you should always consider what to take with on d5. Thinking there is really good idea. Uh, Bishop take. Uh, bishop takes, rook take, and take. And here, uh, Larsen makes an instructive mistake. He could, of course, after this move, white is, of course, better here. Uh, the king side is weak and so on. But it's maybe not lost. And uh, you might be able to, to defend this. Uh, and you do have chances to get your knight into the game again. Um, something, maybe even something like this. So... This was the last chance, but instead he played this move, and I don't think he saw this move. And maybe he saw this move, but the thing is, um, <laughs> the queen cannot go anywhere where it would like to go due to, to the checks here. That is, is very, very annoying. So the, the queen is sort of uh, stuck. And something like uh, this is, is really, really, really unpleasant. So uh, it's not so easy. <laughs> to to have uh, to find out what to what to do here. He played queen d8, natural move, uh, getting out of uh, the checks, and then comes uh, another unpleasant surprise, uh, which is always on the cards in isolated queen pawn position. Is this this move here? Please notice d4 d5 d4 d5, always dangerous. Uh, the thing is, it also opens this diagonal for the queen, making this poor little king here very unsafe. He has to take queen d4, threatening mate in two moves with this move, and queen h8. So exchanging pieces makes sense. Still, we see that something bad is going to happen. F5 is also getting mated by knight a6 and queen h8. So there's only one move uh, that doesn't lose instantly, and that's queen f8. Uh, a warning check, but of course, this does not inspire much confidence. Uh, and Kavalek, who was a strong, strong player, uh, does not mess something like this up. So king h8. Uh, hoping to uh, to maybe get a, be able to to for instance something like this you 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 get out this uh, this 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 one is is a classic um, that you should of course know uh, and we will lose the queen anyway rook e8 and I think everything wins it's just how you choose to do it uh, and. And here, um, he, well, you have to to do something, or or you will get get pretty pretty lost anyway. So f6, trying to get some counterplay, but it's all too late, and hoping for run forest run, but it doesn't help. Help and Cavalic is ice cold here, just putting up. Uh, just having calculated everything, this one is a big fat spider sitting uh, sitting on 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 his head, and and it's all funny. This is one thread. Um, the queen cannot leave this one due to this square. 
So it's taking here and it looks nice, but the problem is, of course, this is an eternal checkmate. And here everything win, but this is, 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 is sort of easy uh, and kind of uh, funny because there's a pin this way, but there's also a pin this way. Um, but now there's no pin, so this is threatening a check, and uh, and there's no, this one is not going to go anywhere, so uh, black uh, resigned. And this was uh, the first video in the isolated queen pawn positions. Uh, there will be plenty more. There are a lot of interesting eternal questions about chess middle game theory that you need to know if you want to be a really strong player. So I hope you will watch the whole thing. It's a nice course. And even though when you have something free online, it seems like you have forever to learn it. One day you will sit at a, at a game with an isolated queen pawn position and you will make a mistake you would not have made if you have watched this uh, video series. So please watch it. And this was GM Talks and thank you. Thank <laughs> you.